and will provide configuration and troubleshooting tips for the Nexus 5000 series. Welcome, Lucian. Thank you, Dan. Now I'd like to briefly outline the format for today's Ask the Expert event. Lucian will start with a short presentation on the Nexus 5000 for the first 25 minutes of the program, and then we will dive into the live question submissions for the remainder of the event. During our live presentation, you may submit a question to be answered by Lucian and a team of Cisco technical experts using the submit box on the left side of your console. Simply type your question and press submit. To see the latest questions and answers during today's presentation, be sure to click the refresh button located just under the slides. You can scroll up to see previous answers in the Q&A box. The team of technical experts is well versed in, six, in, well versed in Nexus configuration, so please begin posting your questions now to give us the best chance of answering them. We'll be asking polling questions during this webcast, and we encourage you to participate by answering them. In fact, the first person to answer each of the three polling questions will win a one-year premiere pass to Cisco Live and Networkers Virtual which will give you full access to hundreds of PDFs and on-demand webcasts. So that's three polling questions with three, three chances to win. Now, let's get started with today's event. We'll kick things off with a polling question. What topic are you most interested in today? VPC or virtual port channels? The Nexus 5000 or the Nexus 2000? Take a moment to answer. Okay, let's have a look at these results. Looks good, next is 5,000 with a VPC right behind it. Okay, now I'd like to hand the mic over to Lucian who'll provide insight on Nexus switches. Thank you, Dan. Welcome, everyone. In today's agenda, as uh, we will be covering uh, the following virtual port channel, Nexus 5000, and the Nexus 2000 series. I'd like just to uh, quickly uh, mention the, ver uh, the wording I'll be using. You'll see me using uh, Nexus 5000 or 5000 or 5K. And uh, for the 2000, when I'll be talking about 2000, you'll hear it about as um, Nexus 2000, 2K, or Fabric Extender, and as well, FEX. So those are the words I'll be using for the 2000. I'll mainly use the FEX word. Now, as we saw uh, in the polling, we'll, we'll start with the virtual port channel. And let's first talk here about the terminology we'll be using. So here is a diagram uh, showing VPC, uh, and uh, we have the Nexus, uh, the, we have the 5,000, two switches, a pair of 5,000, and we have a FEX down, downstream. So a VPC peer will be what we call a switch forming one of the pair. Uh, so uh, a, a VPC peer would be the other 5K in, in, in this one scenario. VPC member port, uh, one, one of a set of ports that will form a VPC. VPC, the virtual port channel, uh, is the combined port channel between the VPC peers and the downstream device. The VPC peer link is the link that is used between the VPC peers um, to, and, to, uh, to synchronize the state and to carry multicast broadcast floating traffic and data traffic in case of VPC member port failure. There's also the VPC peer keep alive link. The peer keep alive link is um, used between the VPC peer switches. It's, uh, it carries a heartbeat and uh, it makes sure that the other switch is alive. Finally, CFS stands for Cisco Fabric Services Protocol, and this is used for state synchronization and configuration validation between the VPC peer devices. Now let's move ahead and see, the, see our feature overview here. What does VPC uh, do and allow us? It allows a single device to use a port channel across two upstream switches. So this is the difference really between a port channel and a virtual port channel. 
It also eliminates um, spanning tree uh, protocol blocked ports. It uses all available uplink bandwidth. In other words, uh, as a regular port channel, we have uh, an active-active scenario where both uh, links will be up, or more than two, depending how many links you have in your port channel. Um, dual home servers will operate in active-active as well as switches. And um, VPC provides fast convergence upon link device failure. Now, let's talk about designs. What are all the options that we have for VPC um, with our 5000 and, and 2000 series? On the left here, you can see three designs which are without VPC. So the top switches um, would be the 5Ks and downstream would be the FEX, and the, the little icons would represent a server. So um, without VPC, what we could do is have one link between a 5K and a FEX or a port channel. Uh, we could have um, a pair of uh, FEXs connected to a server, that's the second drawing, and the server will be in active-passive mode here. Either one link will be active, and if that link fails, the other one will come up. This is without VPC. With VPC, we provide high availability in case of failure of uh, one of the switches or the fabric extender. So VPC designs, um, as you can see here, first off, the first drawing in the middle up is uh, represents a VPC to the FEX. So here we have um, a, two uh, VPCs from each FEX going to the 5Ks. So uh, instead of having two links from each FEX going to a single 5K, we cross them. And so uh, each FEX ha has two links, but two, both 5Ks, and both are active. So in case of failure of one of the 5K, traffic will still flow to the other one. We can also have uh, VPC to the server, and those are the two drawings down uh, in the middle. And uh, there the server will be active, active, so that both links on the server will be up, and each one will go to a fax, to a different physical fax. So this will be called VPC to the server. Starting 4.2 code on NXOS, uh, and with the 2200 series fabric extenders, we can have dual VPC. And here you see we have, this is the last drawing on the right, the bottom. Um, we have VPC from the FEX to the 5K, and we have VPC to the server. So we have dual layer VPC. Let's move ahead now and talk about the path forwarding. What, 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 in, in this example, we'll take unicast forwarding so you can, you can understand what's the traffic flow on a VPC pair. So let's say um, we have a host A down on the right, and host A wants to talk to host C, which is on the top right. So bottom left to top right. Host A will first uh, send a packet to host C, and, and it has a port channel. It has one connection to each fax. So host A will run its own hash algorithm to select one of the paths. So the operating system uh, will, you, will choose uh, with the NIC cards where to send the traffic. So let's say it sends it to the left, to the fax on the left. The packet is received on the fax, and then the fax will run a hash algorithm to select the fabric uplink. Well, here in this example, it has, uh, it has a port channel to, uh, to the 5K, so it will be either one of the two links. And so the fax forwards this, this packet to the 5K1. The 5K1 on the left will now learn uh, host A and it will flood the packet to the VLAN members um, where host A is as well. One copy will be sent to um, um, one copy will be sent to the switch, which is upstream, and one copy will uh, one copy will be sent to host B, and one copy for the pure link. So it will flood the packet. Now the 5K2, which is on the right. Um, will flood the packet to the VLANs, um, to all the VLAN members except the VPC pure member port to prevent duplicated packets. So in here, it will, it will not send the traffic up to the switch upstream or down to the fax. 5K1 will update uh, host A entry 
to 5K2. So 5K2 will have it in its MAC address table. And the packet reaches host C. It, once it, it reaches the switch upstream, it's forwarded to host C, and host C receives the packet. Now, let's talk about the return packet. So host C would like to um, talk back to, to reply to host A. So sends the packet, and it's received by the switch upstream. The switch upstream, as you can see, also has a VPC to both 5Ks. And, and for that switch, it's, it's as one logical switch. So switch, the switch on the top will run its own algorithm and select the path. And let's say in this case, it will select the path to 5K2. So switch sends uh, the packet to 5K2. And 5K2 will now search um, the, uh, in its MAC address table an entry for host A. And we'll find that this entry for host A points to its local fix that belongs to the VPC bundle. So 5K2 will send the packet to that fix on the right. And once the fix receives it, it will just forward it to host A based on the internal header constructed by 5K2. And now host A has received the packet back. Now let's move on and talk about VPC interaction with spanning tree. Spanning tree protocol is deployed to prevent VPC failure cases. Only the VPC primary switch will be running spanning tree protocol. The secondary VPC member, here 5K2, uh, will forward BPDU frames to the primary. Also keep in mind, the VPC peer link uh, is not blocked via spanning tree. And how, how does the VPC primary election work? Well, it's based on priority. So an election happens, and, and in this one example, the 5K1 on the left is the primary, and the 5K2 on the right is the secondary. Now, as we spoke about how VPC works, let's go ahead and, and see two examples. The first example is how we're going to configure VPC to the server. So, in other words, an active, active NIC teaming on the server. So here is the configuration for it. First, we need to enable VPC. So we'll go ahead and, and do feature VPC. We'll, we'll also enable LACP, so feature LACP. We'll, we'll uh, configure uh, a VPC domain number. So, uh, for example, we'll pick a number, and this number has to match on both switches. So in this one slide here, you will see the details of configuration for 5K1. They will have to be duplicated on the other switch as well. Now, we pick, for example, VPC domain 1 on both, and, and then we will um, configure what we call the peer keep alives. So the peer keep alives should be running over the management 0 interface and the management VRF on the 5K. So the way you configure this is with the peer keep alive destination, and you provide the IP address of 5K2 in this example, as we're on 5K1 for the config. Now, once we've configured our VPC domain and our peer keep alives, we're going to go ahead and configure the peer link, the peer link between both 5Ks in orange. This is the second step. So, for example, um, here we have two interfaces, Ethernet 1 slash 17 and Ethernet 1 slash 18. We'll place them in a port channel, uh, mode active, so we'll use LACP. And under that port channel, we, one thing we will do um, to mention that it's a peer link, we will type VPC peer link. This is how uh, our 5Ks will know that this is the peer link to the, other, to the, to the VPC peer. Also, uh, we'll use a trunk, and on the trunk, we'll allow all the VLANs that are on the v on the that will be used on the VPC downstream. So, all your VPC traffic, all the VLANs that are used, needs to be allowed on the peer link. Once our peer link came up, now we can go ahead and configure um, our FEX. So, on the FEX side, um, in our example here, let's say we have Ethernet. 1 slash 7 and Ethernet 1 slash 8 on the 5K1 that goes downstream to the FEX on the left. We'll go ahead and place those two ports in a port channel, port channel 100 in this example. And we, we, for this port channel, we'll say that it's a FEX, so we'll say switch port mode FEX fabric and FEX associate 100, so we'll associate FEX 100 to it. 
This, is, this will be just a regular port channel between the 5K and the FX. And now, here comes our server configuration in green. There, um, we will configure, and the configuration happens on the 5K. There's no configuration that can be made on the FX. All the FX config happens on the 5K. So, uh, now, to configure the VPC to the server, we'll go in the in uh, the port where the, the server is physically connected on the FEX. So as we decided our FEX number will be 100, then the port and, and our server, let's say, is connected to port 1. We go to interface Ethernet 100 slash 1 slash 1. We call a port channel. So in this example, port channel 10. And we will say that port channel 10 is part of VPC 10. The numbers are arbitrary, you can decide what you, uh, what you use, but I strongly encourage you to use consistency between your port channel numbers and your VPC numbers. You will do the same configuration steps on 5K2, and, and so the other effects will also know that for this port channel 10, it's part of VPC 10. And that way, those two links will come up. And here you have configured VPC to the server with an active-active uh, nicktaming. Now let's move, move forward and now talk about VPC to the FEX, where one FEX will have um, links to each 5K. So in case of failure of one of the 5Ks, the FEX and the servers connected to it will have connectivity. The first two steps are the same. Configure your VPC domain and your peer keep alive, and configure your peer link. The only difference here uh, with the previous example is that we'll, we'll configure VPC on the port channel that goes to the FEX. So we configure the port channel for the FEX about exactly the same, but we'll only add a VPC statement in there on, on both 5Ks so they know that, that we have a VPC formed. So in this one case, um, we have two cables going up to the left, uh, 5K1, and, and two connection uplinks going to the 5K2 on the right. And um, we'll, on, on both 5Ks, we'll, we'll call it, for example, VPC100. And this, this will conclude how to configure VPC to the FEX. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how to troubleshoot VPC, how to find out if VPC is properly set up, and how to find your, the problems and, and, and to tackle them. The first command here I would advise you to use is the show VPC brief. The show VPC brief will, will, will resume um, the brief of your configuration. It will tell you your VPC domain ID. It will tell you uh, the status of your peer, if your peer adjacency has formed OK. It will also tell you the status on the keep alive. So it will say peer is alive if it can reach the, the peer uh, across its management zero interface. Uh, configuration consistency status, if a config consistency has happened, it will say success. Uh, VPC role, here is, you will be able to read um, if it's uh, your 5K uh, where you issue this command is primary or secondary. It will tell you how many VPC are configured and it will tell you what, what is your peer link, if it's up, what is the, the port channel used for it, and what's the VPC number mapping, uh, what are the VLANs allowed, and then down it will list all the other VPCs with their port channel information and the VPC ID number. The second command to use for VPC peer is um, the show VPC peer keep alive. If you'd like to, have, to troubleshoot a peer keep alive issue where your peer doesn't come up and says not alive or never was alive, then run this command, show VPC peer keep alive. Here there's two outputs, one is for each 5K, and so here you can see for each one of them uh, the status. So in this one example it will say peer is alive, it will say how long it was alive for, what's the actual status, um, when was the last peer keep alive received, on which interface, um, what is the IP address, and so forth. If you like to look about who is primary and secondary, have more details about, about that, the command to use is the show VPC role. And this will tell you uh, who's the primary, what's the MAC address, what's the system priority, and um, on each one, and so you can compare, and what, what are their MAC addresses. This is for um, the VPC peer, uh, how to check your configuration. 
Now, let's go ahead and talk about consistency. How to make sure that you are consistent in your configuration over both uh, 5Ks. So one command I recommend you to use is the show VPC consistency parameters global. And you can run this on each of the 5Ks. And there's two main columns there. So in this one output from one 5K, you can see the local value column and on the right side, the peer value column. So basically, this will compare uh, the values that are locally configured to its peer. And here, what you want to look for is differences. You shouldn't have differences for everything which is type 1 in the column uh, where it says type, the middle column. Everything that is type 1 needs to match on both 5Ks. If you see a difference there, well, uh, if it's the pure value that is different, go ahead on your other 5K and make the configuration change. If it's on the local, then go ahead and make the change on your local. But you need to have, if you're seeing consistency uh, error messages, well, this, this uh, show command will help you find out what's different. You can do the same thing for um, uh, the port channel to defects for the consistency. So for this, you can use the command show VPC, show VPC consistency parameters interface port channel, and then you can specify the port channel you'd like to look at. And here we'll tell you, uh, again, type 1 are the values that need to match on the local 5K and the pure 5K, and, and those that are not 1 are okay to be a little different. If you're wondering how we know the local and the peer, this is when CFS comes in, and uh, this protocol um, helps uh, each 5K to know the peer values. And now I'll hand the mic to Dan. This concludes our VPC section. Okay, everyone, let's uh, have a look real quick at our second polling question. How familiar are you with the NX OS, Nexus 5000? Nexus 2000 series. Never heard about it, somewhat heard about it, familiar, or using it every day? Take a moment to answer. In the meantime, I will remind you that uh, you can download today's uh, PDF, uh, the full presentation, uh, in the upper right hand corner of your console. Okay, let's have a look at the results. Okay, very good. I'm going to hand the mic back to Lucian. Please continue. Thank you, Dan. Now let's go ahead and talk about uh, Nexus 5000. All right. First off, let's let's uh, go ahead and talk about configuration. That's going to be our next. Uh, uh, four slides, and and after that we'll go ahead and talk about tool troubleshooting tools and other things to uh, to use so you you, you can uh, analyze your 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 network with the 5K. So the first main thing is connectivity. How to establish connectivity um, to your 5K so you can configure it. Um, I recommend you to use the management VRF for that purpose with the Management Zero interface. First off, um, SSH, you can use SSH or Telnet to connect to it. Uh, SSH is enabled by default, and if you like to use Telnet, then you need to enable Telnet on the 5K. So you need to go ahead and type Feature Telnet and, and enable that. Uh, once you've, uh, you've decided if you use Telnet SSH, go ahead and configure Management Zero. So go on the interface Management Zero, provide an IP address. Um, if you'd like to provide a default route, which, which is probably what you'll do when you'll be accessing the device from a different subnet than the Management Zero IP, then go ahead in VRF Context Management and, and, and issue your default route statement. That's, that's the method I recommend you to use for, for connectivity. If your design um, or business needs are that you have to use a 10 gig port and, and uh, an interface VLAN, you can do so. Um, for that, we need to enable first uh, the interface VLAN, so feature interface VLAN, and add the VLAN to the VLAN database, the one that you'll, you'll use to connect, so um, VLAN uh, and the number and exit, so you, you, you put in the database, and go interface VLAN and provide an IP address. 
Uh, don't forget to uh, unshut the interface. By default, interface VLANs are shut down. And um, here you can provide a default route following that to your gateway. But here uh, we'll use the VRF context default instead of the VRF context management. Once we've, we've configured connectivity, another fundamental thing is how to upgrade um, your code. The command is a little different than iOS here, um, and, 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 the, and it's a little different also in the structure because there's two files. There's what we call the kickstart image, and then there's what we call the system image. So when you want to do an upgrade of your 5K code, uh, you'll have to download two files, the kickstart and the system uh, file from our Cisco.com website. And by the way, um, for the FEX code, you don't have to download anything different. Um, the FEX receives its code from the 5K. So when your 5K runs one specific version of code, your FEX will run that version as well, and it will receive it from the 5K. So you have two images. Once you've downloaded them, um, the preferred method to use is with the install all command. And so the, 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 the syntax is install all, kickstart, provide the path to it. So probably it's going to be your boot flash and, and your file name. And then space system and, and, the, and the file uh, for the system file. When you, uh, when you use install all, um, this will update the, the FX primary image in addition to installing the switch images. Um, the FX will remain online while the installation is in progress. And after the installation, the FEX will be rebooted along with, with the 5K. How long this process will take you uh, once you, you've typed the command install all to when you come back? Typically, I would say it runs for about seven minutes, um, about five minutes for the 5K and two minutes for the FEX. Um, so I would say under 10 minutes is what you need for, for the downtime uh, to get the image upgraded. There's a configuration check that's performed during a uh, image install. So uh, you can see that with uh, the show install all impact kickstart or, and show install all status. So you can see what has happened uh, if, if there's anything that went wrong and why. Um, keep in mind to use install all. Um, this will also take care of upgrading everything properly, such as the power sequencer. So uh, use that command and don't only set the boot strings to a newer code um, as, as, you can, uh, as you can do it um, like on iOS, but uh, strongly recommend you to use the install all command. Another interesting topic about configuration is the jumbo frames. So the 5K is a 10 gig switch and, uh, and to process larger traffic, uh, enabling jumbo frames is, uh, helps. Uh, jumbo frames are six times, it's a six times bigger MTU, so it's optimized uh, for 10 gig traffic. The maximum value for jumbo is 9216. You can, of course, use anything uh, above 1500 and it will be called jumbo. So any value between 1500 and 9216 is uh, a jumbo frame. So you need to enable jumbo on the servers in your OS. So for example, on ESX, if you're running VMware, and enable it also on the 5K. By default, it's not enabled. So here is the configuration you can use to enable Jumbo on your 5K. Uh, you'll create a, a policy map. You'll use the, the policy map network QoS that's already there, and you'll set the MTU. Also, there's another command, the command system Jumbo MTU, that defines the maximum MTU size for the switch. However, Jumbo MTU is only supported for system classes that have the MTU configured. So the command is system Jumbo MTU and the value. It will be disruptive. So when you configure um, Jumbo, MT, uh, Jumbo frames, um, you will have, a, you'll have a, a link flap uh, there. Let's move on to uh, password recovery. How to recover and get back on your, on your, on your 5K. So log into your console port, power cycle your switch. During booting, uh, press control bracket to get to the 5K boot prompt. Um, in case you're running earlier code, um, 4, 0 code, uh, uh, and 1 or earlier, the, the process is slightly different. It's the control shift B um, to, to get to the boot prompt. 
And once you're in the boot prompt, basically uh, the switch only loaded the kickstart image. And, and there you can go ahead and, and go in config T and change the password with the command admin password. And once you've done that, you load the system image uh, with the load command. And once you get back on the switch, you, you'll be able to log in with the new password. So this concludes here um, our how to configure uh, the main functions of our 5K. And let's now go ahead and talk about things you can use to, uh, to troubleshoot your network. The first one I'd like to talk to you about is the Ethanolizer. This is a packet capture utility built in NXOS for packets, uh, for the packets that are received to the CPU uh, on the 5K, which are for destination to the 5K. So a couple of things to ask yourself, what interface you'd like to monitor? Is it your inbound, in other words, your 10 gig interfaces, or is it management, the management zero interface? Do you want to save the output as a file, uh, or do you just want to display it? Would you like to filter for a specific port and protocol? Do you want to just read a file that you already stored? And if you just want to have a sample, you could just preview the first packets. So now let's go ahead and, and see how to configure this. Um, there's a little change in the commands um, in our code, uh, so, but here are the latest, uh, the latest commands to use. Um, what, first off, so what interface type you want to monitor? Uh, here's how you do it. The only difference in the, the commands are before we used to do, we used to have ethanolyzer local interface. Now uh, in newer code, the command is ethanolyzer local sniff dash interface. So there's a little change there in the, in the, in the keyword, but everything else is about the same. So um, you have what interface you want to monitor. You can save the packet capture as a file. So for, if you like, save it as a PCAP. And then, if you copy it to your to your to your um, computer, you can open it with Wireshark or TCP dump. You can filter for specific ports and protocol. Um, you can use the regular filters, as in this example. You can read uh, files with the the following command, and you can preview uh, capture. Note that the the preview have changed for in 4.2 code. It has moved from the default value of 10 of 100 to 10. However, if you want to change this back, you can. There's a command uh, you can use to change it. And Ethanolyzer um, gives those packet captures for all the traffic that goes with destination to 5K. Everything else is uh, fabric switched and won't be, uh, will be, won't be captured by Ethanolyzer, which takes us to the next session, how to monitor uh, traffic between hosts and switch traffic um, on the 5K. For this purpose, you can use SPAN. SPAN stands for Switch Port Analyzer. How do you configure SPAN? Well, it's pretty similar to iOS. Uh, one, chain, one slightly difference is if you, if you like to SPAN fiber channel um, traffic, um, there's one slight change there where um, uh, you will go in your fiber channel interface and, uh, and uh, you will set the switch port mode to SD. Um, that's one difference. For uh, Ethernet traffic, it's, it's about the same configuration. Uh, and uh, you can configure your source port, and uh, you, can, you can look at your span session, very similar as iOS with the show monitor command. Don't forget to uh, go and unshut your, your uh, monitoring session as well, or shut it down if you like to activate or deactivate it. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a few troubleshooting tools and a couple of issues that, that come frequently to the TAC. First, uh, SFP issues, ports not coming up. Well, a very frequent message you can see in your logs is, um, you may see in your logs is SFP validation failed. Uh, for that, uh, you can, the command is uh, to look at it as the show logging, so that will that will show you the logs, and uh, you, you'll see an orange message for the validation, or it will give you a reason. For in this example, for example, it could be an unsupported transceiver. So um, I urge you to uh, go and use our compatibil compatibility guide and matrix for supported SFPs uh, to make sure what you have is supported by the 5K. 
Another um, issue that comes is temperature issues. How to look at those? Well, show environment and show environment uh, um, show environment uh, effects for the fabric extender. This will tell you if there's temperature issues, and it will tell you as well if there's a uh, fans that I have that may have failed. Crash. How will you now uh, detect crash and 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 the reasons for that? So a crash is usually recorded with a core file on the switch. Um, if you issue a show version, it will tell you what was the last reset of the switch and the reason. Um, you also have the command show system reset reason. It was, this will list um, when and why your, your, your 5K has, has uh, reset it or crashed. And once you know that, how to move on next? Well, usually crash is followed by a dump of a core file. So to look at your core file and find it, type show core. This will show you if there's a core file that has issued. Um, if you see a, a, show, a core file there, um, you can get the core file. And to do that, it's the last command I, I, I entered here. You can copy it. And you can use the different um, information, so the module number, the instance, the process name, and the PID. And you can export this, and this will be very helpful when you'll troubleshoot with the TAC, um, the reason of your crash. So that's how you can get the core file. Now this will end our um, session for the 5K, and I'll give the mic back to Dan. Hey, thank you, Lucian. Let's go real quick to our last polling question. How many Nexus 5000 or 2000 series switches are deployed in your environment? One to five? 6 to 20, 21 to 50, 51 or more. Take a moment to answer. All right, let's have a look at the results. Excellent. Okay, I'll hand the mic back to Lucian and we'll wrap up the presentation. Thank you, Dan. Now, we'll be talking about Nexus 2000 um, configuration troubleshooting in the, this very last part. So first off, um, there's three designs keep in mind. Um, there's uh, to keep in mind and, and, and to, uh, to select. So pinning a single link or multiple links um, using port channel and pinning multiple uplinks to it or using VPC. When you can, I strongly encourage you to use VPC. Um, if not, just use a port channel between your fax and the 5K. How do you configure the fax? Uh, well, uh, you go in the interface Ethernet uh, on your 5K that's connected to the fax, and you tell the 5K that this is a fax that's connected. So switch port mode, fax fabric. And you have to choose a number for your fax. So for example, a number from 100. So for example, fax associate 101 here. If you connect your fax to two different 5Ks, um, I, please use the same fax number, especially if you want to use VPC. And this is how you verify it, show interface, Ethernet, uh, and uh, the fax. A few commands to help you verify your configuration, show fax. This will tell you uh, the fax number, the description, the serial number, and what's the state of it. Uh, the show fax detail will tell you more about your fax, and, and you will see the fabric ports uh, that are connected to the fax and the, the pinned fabric ports, if they're pinned in a port channel or if it's static pinning. So if you're using uh, port channel, obviously the, 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 the primary fabric will say port channel. How to uh, find out if, you ha if you're getting mismatched messages on faxes, uh, look at what physical fabric ports are connected to the fax and the serial numbers. So show interface fax fabric will tell you that. And um, quickly, I'd like to um, tell you about three scenarios for, for troubleshooting. The first is uh, fax is not discovered. Fax is not discovered. So first off, you know, check your power, your fans, your chassis lights, check your layer one cables. And, and check on your transceiver. Also use the version, uh, uh, also use the comp compatibility version between FEX hardware and NXOS. If you're running 2200 FEXs, make sure you're at least on 4.2 code on the 5K. 
and connect a single, um, use a single connection to a 5K as well, uh, eliminate the other uplinks. And that doesn't help, of course, move on and contact the tag. Another, another issue is um, the fix is not coming online. There's two reasons there's, uh, for, for this to happen, um, provided you have uh, you know, the proper power and fans and so forth. It could be a flash failure or an ASIC failure. Um, if it's a flash failure, the fix will not come online and the show interface fix fabric will, no show, will not show the fabric port as active. Also, the locator LED will flash when the fix fails to boot. Uh, if you have an ASIC failure, in other words, a hardware failure, um, the fix will, will, will may not come online if it's the, the, um, the hardware that is connected to the 5K. If it's other hardware equipment, you may see it in a show diagnostics. And finally, uh, an issue that comes very often, uh, identity mismatch. Um, if you get a message saying uh, that you have an identity mismatch, there's most likely a misconfiguration between your, your both uh, 5Ks or your cabling is, may not have been done right uh, to your 5Ks. So look at the, the previous command uh, to find out uh, to which 5K you're connected and use the same configuration. Now, I'd like to uh, talk about performance issues to conclude here. Um, if, you're, if you're seeing, um, if you're observing slow traffic, traffic loss, or your application is not performing as expected, um, first off, think about, are you using a proper design? Um, do you have, because you'll have 10 gig uplinks and you may have one gig uh, to your servers. Is your design right? Um, are you, aren't you sending more than one gig traffic to a server that has only a one gig card? That would be the first question to ask yourself, and, and review the design guides, which I will, I will indicate in, in, the, in the next uh, documentation portion. Provided this, um, there are, um, on the Nexus 5K, uh, there are three things uh, you can look at uh, for, for, for this issue. So first is um, how to uh, identify drops. There are logical and physical causes for the 5K to drop a frame. And there's also a situation when a frame can be dropped because of the cut-through nature of the switch architecture. If a drop is necessary, but the frame is being switched in a cut-through path, then the only option is to stump the Ethernet frame check sequence, the FCS. And stomping a frame involves setting the FCS to a known value that doesn't pass a CRC check. So when a frame is received on a 10 gig interface, it's considered to be cut through path. Um, how you would look there for drops? Well, the command to use will be the show platform FWM info PIF Ethernet and your port. And there, look at the last two lines for transmitted and received statistics, and look at the drops and the discards. Another uh, a set of two other commands for the expected logical drops. Um, you can look at the, at the hardware. Um, so those are the two commands here I, uh, I uh, provided you with. And, and look at the numbers of, uh, of, of drop packets. And look at the increment over time, the increment. So issue the commands a couple of times. And it's the same for identifying drops. To, uh, to see if you're an issue where drops are happening, issue the commands uh, a few times. Another issue with performance uh, is uh, when your buffer queue uh, is getting fooled. So um, show queuing interface and your, your interface. Um, this will tell you if there are drops uh, queued, uh, if a queue is full. So when a queue is full, um, you need to in increment discards in the respective queue on the egress interface. And you will observe discards. Uh, on the effects, uh, how would you look for drops? Especially here, I, I give you the commands for the 2148. They are a little different for the 2200s, but it's, it's, the, it's a similar structure. So uh, those will also tell you about your queues uh, and buffers and, and drops that you could, you, could, you could experience. So those are key commands to troubleshoot performance and see if um, something is happening on your, on your 5K and faxes. In conclusion, I'd like here to give you a couple of pointers um, to documentation. 
For 5K, the product page, the config guides, the release notes, the installation hardware guides, and as well for the facts, a couple of uh, key documentation places for your reference. And uh, a few other things we covered today, password recovery, ETH analyzer, span. And finally, about VPC, um, the configuration guide, the quick start guide, I, I encourage you to look at the quick start guide if, if you're new to VPC, it's very well summarized. The white paper, um, and at the very end, um, the design paper. So this is a very uh, good document that will cover the designs we, we talked about today and, and, and um, all how, how things come together and what design to use uh, to meet your business needs. And this will conclude the, my presentation. So I'll, I'll give the mic back to Dan. Okay, thanks Lucian, great presentation. Also, thank you to everyone for participating in the event polling. Now it's time to answer some of the questions that our viewers have submitted today. By the way, if you can't stay with us for the discussion, be, be sure to click on the evaluation button to let us know how the session met your business needs and expectations. Also, the first 10 list listeners to complete the evaluation will receive a $20 Amazon gift card. Okay, let's move into the Q&A portion of the event. And just please be aware, you can still submit questions at any time. Let's move to our first question. Does the Nexus 5K support VPC sync between the VPC peers? Excellent question. So we know that there is a CFS protocol that's used between the, the 5K pair. And as of today's code, uh, there is no configuration sync. However, very soon in our, in our next release of code, there's a feature called config sync, where we have worked to, uh, to uh, basically empower, um, empower this uh, uh, so you don't have to replicate all the configurations across each other and configuration changes. So look for our next code release, our next main code release, which, are, which is coming up, and, and the feature is called Config Sync. Great. Move on to our next question. What is the most appropriate method of toggling the VPC role when there is a role mismatch? Okay. When, when there is a, a, toggle, a mismatch for the VPC role, well, you'll have a VPC primary 5K and, and the other one will be secondary. So typically you will not see a mismatch. There will be an election based on, on, the, on the priority um, that will occur and, and, and you will have a primary that will be elected and a secondary. In case of failure VPC scenarios, um, if, you, if we lose connection to the primary, let's say, um, the, the secondary can take over and assume the primary role but, and it will tell you, VPC secondary acting as primary. Excellent. Let's move to our next question. I have a, a 5010 and a 5020. Can I use the ports with a speed of one gig? Okay, you have a 5010 and a 5020. Um, yes, you can use port speed of one gig. So. The 5010, it's the first eight ports where you can set the speed to one gig. And of the 5020, it's, it's the first 16 ports that you can use. And the command is speed 1000. So uh, um, those, uh, keep in mind the first interfaces are the one you can use for to set the speed. Okay, let's go to our next question. Assume the following, a Nexus 5K with a 2K fabric extender. The fabric extender fails and a new one is requested from the TAC. Assume when the 2K goes down, all the configuration is lost or gone from the 5K. When the new 2K is connected, do we have to reapply the configuration for the relevant portion of the 2K? So we, we, you have, we have a 5K and a 2K and, and your fabric extender fails, um, you get a new one. So. When you get a new one and just connect it directly, um, it will come up with, with a fax uh, number configured. However, um, I encourage you to save your configuration uh, because um, you may need to reapply it. There will be um, configure, uh, so um, yeah, that's the, save your configuration and, uh, 
and uh, the, the fax number will be defined, but you will have to enter your, your other settings for the ports. All right, next question. Does the Nexus 5K provide 10 gig speed to every uh, single port? Yes, it does. You can use every of it of it of its uh, of its ports uh, with a 10 gig speed. Correct. All right. Let's get another question here. Please, uh, please do submit any more questions if anybody has them. Is Jumbo MTU enabled by default on the Nexus 5K? Um, Jumbo MTU is not enabled by default, so make sure to configure this as we saw in our Jumbo Frame section uh, slide and, and enable the Jumbo Frames for, for the 5K. By default, it's, it's disabled. Very good. Another question here. What, what kind of L3 features will be supported in 5K, in Nexus 5K? EIGRP, OSPF, RIP2, ISIS, MPLS, VR, VRF Lite, etc. Good, very good question. So, as of today, the 5K is a pure layer two switch, and um, there will be uh, actually a, uh, a uh, an additional module that will provide a layer three features, a daughter card that you'll be able to place in your extension slot. So. The features that will support it, uh, I'd like not to go exactly in detail for now, but yes, you will have routing protocols and, and you'll have uh, a good handful of, of layer three features. Um, if, if you'd like exactly um, to get all the details, uh, I could provide you this during our Ask the Expert event following today. Another question here. Can I use a ethanolizer to sniff traffic between two hosts? Um, you should use PAN and not ethanolizer. Keep in mind that ethanolizer is for traffic that is uh, um, going directly to the 5K. So uh, um, in, in, in this scenario, use a PAN. Uh, another question here: uh, What SP, what SFPs can I use with Nexus switches? Good question. So there's a matrix compatibility guide um, for the 10 gig. We support the um, SFP 10 gigs, which are the SR, the LR. Uh, we support the TwinX cables with the one, three, five meters. Uh, all the twin, TwinX cables available. We also support the FET, which are the SFPs, um, and FET stands for Fabric Extender, so those are the SFPs to connect to FEXs. Um, those are for the 10 gig. For, for, the, for the 1 gig, you can use the GLCTs, for example. Make sure to use Cisco SFPs, um, else you'll get, uh, you'll get unsupported SFP message. All right, next question here. Is R-SPAN supported on the 5K? R-SPAN as of now is not supported. Um, there is ER-SPAN um, support, but uh, not R-SPAN at this point. It, it's in the works. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's in the works, but as of today, R-SPAN is not supported. All right, next question here. What would you use as a core to go with the Nexus 5K? Good question. I would use either um, either seven um, either um, seven Ks as a pair, uh, or I would use a uh, Cat 6 Ks with VSS. But but this is this depends also on your business needs. There's other ways. Um, there's other other uh, switches you could use. You could use. Uh, Catalyst uh, 4500s. You could use um, you could use other upper switches depending on exactly w what is your, your 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 deployment. What are you trying to achieve? Um, if you'd like 10 gig up, well, yes, certainly use uh, use if you can um, 7k uh, as a pair. If and if if you can, if you if if, if not, you know a VSS a Cat 6k pair in VSS. 
th those are those that would come to my mind first, I would say, in large data center deployments. But y you could use other, other, other uh, switches as well, uh, depending on, on, on what exact design you're trying to achieve. Okay, let's go to our next question here. Uh, would we would we be able to upgrade existing Nexus 5Ks to support L3 features and cards? That's a good question. Um, there uh, may be a need to change your Nexus, uh, but not for the L3. So, actual uh, the the you. The, they, they will be there will be a newer um, a newer hardware uh, coming, but um, for L3 you will be able to use it with your actual. So uh, long story, but uh, no, you don't have to upgrade your your hardware to support the L3 feature card. All right, got time for one more, I think. Is the Jumbo MTU affecting performance if it's config configured unnecessarily? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, you can configure it, and uh, and this all the the traffic is hardware switched. So actually, um, if it's not configured, the 5K will 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 uh, actually uh, try to reduce the the size of packets that are larger. Uh, but if you configure it it will not uh, be uh, affecting performance. So there's no reason why not to configure it. Okay, I think that uh, wraps up the Q&A for today's event. Thank you everyone for, for participating.